Good morning. We are uh, having a little bit of technical difficulties with the internet today, so uh, uh, bear with me as we go through this. But I pray that uh, you're having a blessed morning and that you're ready to get your day started off with God's Word. And so um, this is new for us, and so there will be changes as we go throughout. But uh, we're going to attempt to um, do this on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, around this time. But if you know of a better time or you can think of, I'd be open to other ideas. And so uh, I'm just trying to work my way through this and figure out what's most beneficial for those that are um, tuning in. And so if you have a question as we go throughout this, please, please take a moment and type it in or send me a message and I'll be happy to address that. And so um, we're going to have some more information coming out in the days ahead about just exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, but one of the things that um, <clears throat> I want to communicate through this daily is uh, the need to be intentional every single day. The Christian life is not made up of one day a week on Sunday. It's not made up of one time of walking down an aisle or praying a prayer. It's made up of daily choosing to follow Christ and being obedient to his word. And so that's what we're going to seek to do. Uh, Paul tells us in Ephesians, uh, he tells us this, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, uh, but as wise, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. And uh, that's exactly what we're wanting to do with this uh, daily devotional is we're wanting to make the best use of our time. And so it's going to be short, but it's going to be very intentional that it is going to address the things that are going on in our lives on a regular basis. And so uh, we're just going to kind of start today in the book of First Peter, and <clears throat> I'll explain why that is here in just a moment. But I pray that you have your Bible handy and uh, maybe a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, whatever you uh, prefer, and uh, we're going to get started this morning. So if you would, excuse me, and um, we are going to uh, read from God's Word in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. This is what God's Word has for you today. It says, Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for the sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. As we look at this text, um, I need us to understand why I chose First Peter as this first uh, book or this first section of scripture that we are going to go through. And there may be times that I take a day and we divert from this. I want it to be extremely practical for daily practicing uh, the Christian faith. But I thought First Peter was a great place to start because of the situation in which we find ourselves in this world that we live in right now. Um, we are in a time in which um, we are practicing uh, social distancing. We are separating ourselves from other, not because of persecution, but because of uh, viruses. And so um, I thought this was fitting because Peter is writing to a group of Christians, um, and it's, it's debated on how they got this way, but they're dispersed throughout all of Asia Minor. Um, apparently they are away from uh, the things that they are common to. They're exiles. They're foreigners, uh, if you will. They don't belong. They don't fit in. And they are feeling very, very lonely. And and I think it's important for us to see that because if Peter has hope for them, then he can have hope for us too. He can have hope for um, those that are separate. And so um, this is kind of why I chose to start here. But as we jump in, I think it's important to understand that Peter begins with identity for a reason. Um, Peter's description of the recipients as both chosen and foreign um, uh, defines their identity in relationship to God and in relationship to uh, society, respectively. They are simultaneously foreign and known. And so... Um, <clears throat> That is exactly what we are um, 
that that is exactly what we are in this moment. We are uh, foreign um, in the sense that we are separated. We are uh, set apart. We uh, we don't have a common life together anymore. Um, we are distant from one another, but we are also known. And so I bring this up because I understand in a time of separation like this, uh, we can feel very lonely. Um, yes, we have social media. Yes, we have phones, but it's different from day-to-day -day interaction with people we go to work with. It's different from day-to-day -day interaction with the people we go to church with and uh, sometimes even our own families that we are separated from. But even though we are separated from them, we need to know that we are known by God. We are still in his presence. We are near to him. And so um, that's kind of where I am at this morning as we, uh, as we look at this. And so uh, this is what Peter is trying to communicate to us is that even for us who are scattered, there is hope for us. And so I just got three practical takeaways that I want us to look at very quickly here. It says that uh, they are elect exiles according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. And so kind of the first thing that I want us to take away here is... Give me just a second. Once again, technical difficulties. All right. Um, it's not going to work for me, so bear with me. Uh, one of the things that I want us to note uh, this morning is that hope in God's plan. We need to hope in God's plan more than our own. We need to hope in God's plan more than our own, and that's. That's uh, one of the big takeaways that we have here. You know, we go throughout our days planning our days and, and plotting what we're going to do. And we, we think, okay, today we're going to go to the grocery store and suddenly the grocery store is closed. Or we go, uh, we think, okay, today I'm going to uh, go on vacation and we can't do that. Or we're going to go on a cruise and we, we can't do that. Or we think today we are going to do such and such. And we have these plans that we think God has for us. Uh, or that we have for ourselves, and we oftentimes ignore the plans that God has for us. Peter begins by giving these people hope by telling them that they are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. God knows the struggles that we're going through today, and he has a purpose for them as well. Uh, Tom Schreiner says it this way, It is the purposeful plans of God, larger than an individual's life, that forms the ultimate foundation for the hope and encouragement that Peter is about to offer. In other words, it is God's purposefulness that can give us hope today. So even though you may have plans today, what happens if those things uh, don't happen? Well, God is still in control. He still has planned things out. Matter of fact, he may have used these things not working out the way you planned to produce and use something that is uh, God glorifying. He may have used these intentionally for us to make us more faithful, to make us more steadfast, maybe to uh, burn off the sin that's in our lives, or to just reveal our own hearts and the idols that we make. So the first practical takeaway is hope in God's plan more than yours. Um, the second practical takeaway is we need to want what God wants. He's talking to these uh, people that are scattered and feeling foreign and alone in their time. And the beginning hope that he gives them is not only are they uh, uh, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, but they are chosen in the sanctification of the Spirit. And I know sanctification is a big word, and um, this is a small time frame, so I can't go through everything. But uh, let me just begin by saying that sanctification uh, simply is this process of, of God taking us from where we are and bringing us to where he wants us to be, which is more like Christ. And so it's this progress daily of us becoming more and more and more and more and more like Christ. And so this is his purpose for us, and we need to want what God wants. We need to want that transformation of our lives. We need to want to work out these things in our lives. Um, it's no different than at the beginning of every year. It seems like gym memberships soar and people flood the gyms and they want to work out every day and do those things. Well, if we were to look at and uh, and Paul's letter to Timothy, he tells him that that he should have nothing to do with irreverent and silly myths. Rather, he should pursue godliness. For bodily training is of some value, but godliness 
is of value in every way as it holds a promise for the present life and the one to come. It's the same way that we would train our bodies to exercise and work out or the same way that we would intentionally plan out a diet so that we're going to eat uh, this in the morning at breakfast and maybe this for a snack and this for a lunch and, 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 and those things. Um, we should want to see God work in us holiness. We should want to see God work in us um, an, uh, an obedience to his word in very particular areas of life. And so we have to, the second practical takeaway is we have to want what God wants, and that is transformation. We want we have to want to be different. Um, we have to think clearly about what it means to move from where we are to look more like Christ. And that leads us to the third takeaway, work towards obedience in one area of your life today. Notice he says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. Uh, do you want to see God change you? If so, in what area? Where do you want to see God change you? Do you want to see him change your anger? Do you want to see him change your anxiety? Do you want to see him uh, change uh, uh, the, the things that you think about on a daily basis so that they would be more godly? Do you want... God to change uh, the way that you respond to your children or to your co-workers? Do you want God to change the way that you look at um, uh, some habit in your life that is ungodly in some way? Um, maybe you want God to transform your marriage or um, another relationship that you have. Uh, work towards obedience in those particular areas. Work towards obedience to Jesus Christ in very practical ways. So the, the thing that I would like you to do today is as we begin this process is just to pick one area of your life that you would like to see God transform radically over the course of not just today, not just tomorrow, but maybe the week over the course of the month, and to intentionally work towards that end, to pray towards that end, to study God's word towards that end, to read good books towards that end, and, and put those things into practice in one area of your life. What is that area that you want to be more obedient in? You see, these three practical takeaways were given to people that were separated from others, but were in the presence of God. And I think that's where we are today. So I would encourage you to begin doing this today, to begin hoping in God's plan more than yours, to begin wanting what God wants and having a transformed life, to begin working towards obedience in one very specific area in your life today. Matter of fact, I'm going to pray towards that end, but I would encourage you to, right where you're at, to take a moment and pray towards that end as well. As I'm praying, you know, we have a, a big God that can hear all of our prayers, and he can hear your prayer as well. So as I pray, you pray as well that God would work in a specific area of your life. And, um, and then as we close this, begin to maybe write that thing down somewhere. Right? What, write it in your Bible. Write it on a post-it note and stick it here so that tomorrow when you open your Bible to First Peter, you see, hey, I wanted to work on this. How did I do yesterday? And what can I do better today? And be intentional with that thing. So I'm going to pray for us. Um, and uh, as I do so, I hope that the Lord gives you grace and peace today. So let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your word, and we thank you for the opportunity to read and study it, Lord. I pray that even though uh, we've had some technical difficulties this morning, I pray that you have been honored in um, this time together, that you will continue to be honored in this time together, Lord and that you would work in our lives a desire to want what you want, Lord. I'm not sure what is going on in the lives of those that are here, that are listening uh, right now, but whatever it is, Lord, uh, work in their lives a desire to want what you want. And Lord, I'd also ask that you would work in them uh, a plan for obedience that is uh, according to your word, Lord. If there's somebody out there that's struggling with anger or anxiety, Lord, I pray that you would give them a peace 
today, that you would provide for them a hope in knowing that even though that they don't know what's going on, you do, Lord. Uh, For somebody out there, Lord God, that's struggling with their relationship with their children or their spouse today, Lord, I pray that you would provide healing for that relationship through your word and through your spirit as we apply your word to our lives, Lord. Whatever it is that's going on, I pray that you would be glorified. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. And in the words of Peter, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Have a great day.